Fit and 10 Nation, welcome to day 57. And if you are in this challenge, that means you've got 14 days left. And if you're not, it just simply means that we are in the final leg of this challenge. The final 20% of our 10 week challenge, which is for those of you who don't know, we run a challenge. The goal is loss of 30% total fat mass. That is, we estimate your total body fat mass in pounds, and we look at losing 30% of that. That's the goal, unless we're dealing with somebody who is very overweight, but usually I don't accept those people in the challenge. Usually I deal with those people one-on-one. -on -one. We start them somewhere differently. Somewhere in that one to, you know, three, three and a half pounds of uh, fat per week. So mm -hmm. that ranks up. Anyways, let's get into today, Martina. We're gonna talk about uh, some food as we always do. So for those of you who are unaware, we go through people's food journals on a daily basis. We give them feedback. And in every video, we talk about some of these foods and why or why not they are acceptable or perhaps what some better replacement or choices or maybe modes of cooking might be. And so let's get into it here. Oxtail. Oxtail. This is a weird one. I mean, why did you choose oxtail? Because I saw it. I don't know. I don't even know. I've never eaten oxtail. You're okay. Saying. Well, so for your information, mm -hmm. it is the meat to fat ratio is like 85 15 right okay so and it's beef i mean i mean it's ox but you know we want to mean it's a red meat so what do you think uh i don't even know what an ox looks like is it like <laughs> just like, imagine that we're talking about retail what? yeah okay um yeah i i don't know i'm not familiar with it i don't eat it so there's like a logo even... in the center and everything and it looks and oh then, yeah, yeah okay. and the meat and then it, it appears to be fattier than it is because the meat is actually really yeah. lean and then the fat reside on the outside but again generally speaking that meat is is 85 15 so yeah that's pretty fatty i mean listen you need some fat in your diet yeah. and uh, i don't have any issue with people having well actually we should talk about this just quickly here mm -hmm. i should just say i don't have a problem with eating with people eating saturated fat, but just so you're aware, when you eat fat that's in a lot of meat, depending on how the animal's raised, a, a good portion of that fat is actually not, uh, is unsaturated. That's so everybody right. thinks feet, uh, fat in the, coming from red meat is saturated, saturated fat. All the time, yeah. It's not all saturated. It's just, it's usually about somewhere around 50%, depending on what the animal's mm -hmm. been fed and depending on the animal. Yep. And the rest is, you know, usually some form of uh, unsaturated. Yeah. Uh, fat. So, um, you know, I think there was an example given, actually, this is just an interesting example. I'm just going to, without going down any rabbit holes here, uh, a four ounce pork chop has less saturated fat than two tablespoons of uh, olive oil. Mm -hmm. interesting. So, you know, and nobody would ever, you know, nobody ever thinks of saturated fat when they have olive oil, but if they think about pork, they go, oh my God, it's saturated fat. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, on top of that saturated fat isn't, I don't even think there's really any, any, any issue with it in, in moderation. So oxtail is fine, right? Well, okay. So short answer is yes, it's fine, I guess. But the problem that I have with it is you're going to get a decent amount of fat with that. Mm -hmm. So that is, in, in this challenge, we give you a, a macronutrient distribution to pay attention to. So Basically, it means you're getting a certain amount of fat, protein, and carbohydrates per day. Mm -hmm. And if you, so you're getting a lot of a certain amount of fat. So if you're eating a pretty fatty source of meat, then that, that takes, takes a lot away. of your fat away. But so, I have to say to you, and you know this about me, that I really like my, all my, I really like fat coming from actually animal sources, right? So you know that I always have preferred whole eggs to egg whites. Um, salmon to any white fish, yep. beef always over, let's say, chicken. But even with the amount of fat that you've given me, which is a little over 50 grams of fat, I still get away with eating one once a day with eating a source of, um, of saturated fat of meat, you know, and I really like that because I don't mind at all, again, you know, having egg whites and a whole bunch of vegetables, um, having my potatoes, you know, just baked with no oil. I don't mind any of that food. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, I prefer it. So for me, you know, like I just have to make a constant effort to eat more nuts, to have oil with my food. When you're asking me to eat 54 grams of uh, fat per day, much easier for me to have a whole egg, oxtail, yeah. you know, bison or things of the sort. For, for me personally, I, I look for leaner meats because I don't 
I don't really get that much of a difference in taste between the two. That's I mean, there's a huge difference. There's a, there's a difference. I agree. There is a difference. <laughs> but I, you know, I'm going to prefer if I can. Well, first of all, I supplement with fish oil. Yeah. Uh, but I'd rather get my fat sources from things like um, nuts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? So I like to leave some room in there to have some macadamia nuts or maybe some walnuts or something like that mm -hmm. uh, in my diet. And I also like to have a little bit of uh, mixed nut and seed butter as well. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, if I have a fatty meat, plus I have some whole eggs in my diet, then that's like my whole... Yeah, but like I, I said, you know, for somebody like me again that does not eat seeds and yeah. doesn't, you know, he's not going to have nuts and now you know I don't have shakes. No, but I, I made a point no, 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 here. No, no, You've had issues with fat before. Yes, but yeah, I'm, I'm telling you that... The, She's had issues with fat. <laughs> that I don't have any shakes and you know why I don't have shakes right now. And I don't have nuts either. So it's a little bit harder for me to come up with the amount of fat. And then that's the reason why I allow myself to have... Anyway, you can check my... Uh, my uh, my logs, you'll be surprised to find that there is mostly just chicken, egg white, you know, protein powder with water yeah. and literally and bison and or coconut okay. milk well, or this something is good. of this sort. I'm just, you know, the only reason I'm skeptical is because I know what uh, history has shown, but I know that you're improving with that. So yeah. because it was almost uh, like, well, I guess this is when we, when you weren't maybe monitoring your food so much in the off season. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, what about the second uh, element today? What about vanilla skirt? Uh, okay, so this is another pet peeve of mine. Oh, mm -hmm. can I give you the, the macros first? Okay, sure. Um, if it is, let's say, 0%, this one here yep. is 11 carb, 18, um, 18 uh, protein. Yeah, okay. It's not so bad, but... Mm -hmm. You know, again, that 11 carb is, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of carb just coming from the... From the yogurt. From the, yeah, yeah. yeah, from the milk, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, essentially. Um, the lactose. Uh, but I have myself a problem with adding sugar to yogurt. I have a pro I, I generally have an issue with people adding or having foods where there is calories added without any nutritional benefit. It's for the taste benefit. Yeah, well, add some fruit to it. Okay, but they or probably... add some pr uh, vanilla protein powder to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So anyway, do you think it's bad? No. It, well, yes. I, it, so in my terms, of my where that would go on my list of acceptable or not. Listen, when it comes to a client, it depends on where they're coming from and their background. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about somebody who's been eating out and eating like really poor foods and having really you know a lot of their food that they're eating is processed and mm -hmm. now they're just they're doing stuff like this. Okay, it's a win. Mm -hmm. It's a win. But generally speaking, if you just want my general uh, acceptable or not, no, it's not acceptable. Eat some uh, plain yogurt with some fruit. Uh, add some honey in there. Okay, you might say, well, that's sugar. Yes, it is. But there is a lot of nutritional benefit that comes with honey. Mm -hmm. You know, usually with something like this, we're, we're talking about artificial some, flavor. Yeah, yeah, some like glucose fructose or, yeah. or something similar to that. So I would have to look at the sugar source in this, but, but actually, actually, I don't. Because I, already, I know what it is. I know what you it know is. You know what? I have to say that I'm, I'm maybe a little bit more on the fence than you are because you're right about that. I think that if you want to get somebody who has who has never eaten, you know, plain yogurt, mm -hmm. I think that it's really hard to go from eating yogurt to Greek yogurt. To you just swore. Um, bad yogurt to eating uh, Greek yogurt or curry yogurt. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's not the end of the world. Again, it, it depends on how much of it, what it goes with. Um, how often you have it and things of the sort. And it is true, you're right, that there's always a cleaner solution out there, Mark, but this is not about, you know, going, jumping from, you know, again, eating food in the street to, or in the restaurants to uh, to be completely clean. It's somewhere in between. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. And this, in this particular example is definitely uh, one of the best choices you could have if you're having flavored yogurt. Mm -hmm. That I will say for sure. But again, you know, for somebody like myself who has, I have three, generally have three servings of Greek yogurt per day. So that's usually, you know, I have, I have three servings of 150, 200 grams of yogurt. Per day. I basically have a container of yogurt every day, like a bigger container of yogurt. So if, if for me eating this, then that would be a whole whack load of sugar. And so, um, but yes, you know, you're quite right in the grand scheme of things. And generally speaking, where people come from as a starting point, okay, maybe not so bad. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if I have to put it in my list, I'm probably going to say 
Well, I'm not going to, I don't, you know, let's just be clear with this. I'm going to say no. Okay. So, Can yeah. I briefly touch on um, stretching? Uh, sure. Okay, so I've been asked by um, a handful of you about stretching. You know, because sometimes I don't have the time to incorporate it into my class. And um, I'm going to say that stretching is a really good thing, albeit temporary, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea that you absolutely have to stretch once you're done training is not always really um, accurate to me. I think that you have to have a proper warm up, which I always insist on. Um, as for stretching, I think it's like, you know, if it makes you feel better, if you have the time to do it, 100% go for it. If you're going to be sore, if you worked really hard, it's a really good moment to yourself. It's going to make a difference. But I'm not like a hundred percent sure that it actually has any benefits whatsoever. It doesn't. It is. It has. It has short-term benefit in terms of, as you mentioned already, I'm sure you obviously you know, it has short-term benefit in terms of making the joint feel a little bit looser. The mm -hmm. the the um, whatever muscle you're stretching, it's going to yeah. feel a little bit more. Um, more lax, basically. It's more lax for sure. So you're going to have some short-term release, you can say. But if you're really gonna, you know, if you're strapped for time, which most people are, which most people are, and you want the benefits of your joints feeling better, you're better to do some mobilization and some uh, some small strengthening movements to to help better strengthen the. You know, these are movements that I consider like more more nuts and bolts. They're kind of Pilates esque type mm -hmm. movements that you do um, prior to training, whatever you're gonna work out that day. But when we that, did this, I was talking about the classes, the classes, there's a lot yeah. of, you know, we do the mobility, the, uh, yeah. yeah, the warm ups, we do everything dynamic. Yeah. But in terms of the, the stretching, it's just to make you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Actually, that's the, that's the best for you. Do doing some sort of dynamic warm up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think is, you know, like if you're doing, if it's a, if it's a lower body workout targeted day, you can do some stuff that's going to target the hips and the knees, Absolutely. you know, and ankles maybe to some degree. Yeah. Um, dynamic warm-ups. These have way more value, long-term value than simply stretching. Mm -hmm. Stretching is, and what I'm going to say is uh, a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Um, what is the message of the day? All right, here we go. It's, uh, this is actually one of my favorites. Most people overestimate what they can do in the short term and underestimate what they can achieve in, in the, the long term. term. It's not about short term, it's about long term, which means, I know it's gonna sound a bit cheesy, but we need to be balanced and methodical with what we do and not extreme. Mm -hmm. Whether this is your calorie intake or your modality of exercise or intensity, all these things have to be considered. Think long term is my point. Positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself and for the love of God, give some gratitude. We'll talk to you all very soon.